put it. But I must say, right, OK, he had a poor quarter, but what character to, to come up for the last point, having missed an easier one, a fair, fairly easy one for Joe Kenny, but showed great character to score the last one from the sideline, mm -hmm. you know. And that takes a lot, this. All right. On, on Twitter, one of the big question mark was, should, should he have gone for a goal from the penalty? Should Henry have gone for a Des, goal? Des, you see, the what they're talking about is, in the first half, there was a 21-yard free for Kilkenny. Yeah. At that stage, they were down to five points. Now, Henry goes to take a, a cheeky one. Yeah. He, wasn't, he wasn't set for a 21. He tries to stick it. A great save by Fergal Moore. The compound in Atterville, he takes a 65 and it goes wide. Yeah. Now, in the, in the second, like, that's the great save here, and the 65 goes wide. There were five down at that stage. In the second half, there's only two and a half minutes left, roughly, and yeah. this puts him a pint up. Now, if he went for the goal and got it, it had win the match, but he was figuring they're a pint up to lead. Now, he looked across to the general on the sideline, and Brian Cody, he left it up to himself, yeah, but he right. felt that was a safer option. They're two different, completely, situations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, Gaw were very lucky in one of them two, because Johnny Cohen throws the hurdle, and it was never pulled up at yeah. all. It could have been a dream, but like, he went, he figured a pint up, the pressure now was on the young Gaw team to come back. Was it the right decision? Oh, I, I would, I would back him on yeah. that decision, yeah. like, you know, because if it was saved, I think Gaw would win yeah. the match. At the, time Joe, of the match uh, at the time of the match, it was, it was crucial. I suppose in the first half, at that stage, when he went for the 21, Kilkenny probably hadn't, you know, they, they had been poor in the first half, so I suppose he was trying to maybe get an old springboard going, and you know, often enough, and I think you look at the Galway lads in the line, Fergal Moore for me was the only one that was tuned yeah. into it, he was the only one that reacted, yeah, yeah, yeah. the rest of them yeah. were kind of watching, they weren't expecting it, so I've often seen Henry do that, you know, he, for, from a free like that, and I can just get the thing going, and I think at the stage of the match, okay, he missed the 65, but it was probably, it was worth an old gamble, but definitely the second chance, as you said. It was yeah. the right decision. Definitely. From but a goal-getter like Well, I'd, l I'd love to have seen him. I was, I was at Roaring Amon to have a go for it. I said, <laughs> and he was on. dreaming about the net billowing there behind it. him. But yeah. I'd love to have, you know, I thought yeah. it, was, it, was, it would have been a great way to finish <laughs> it. But Donald's view, just yeah. was he right decision? I think he was. It was a tight game. There's, they had scored 11 points on the trot. Well, not on the trot, yeah. but bit by bit. Galway only scored 1-3 and they were finding it difficult to get scores. So, you know, a minute and a half left of, of normal time. You know, a point was going to win it for you that time. I think it was the percentage... Um, shot really like and he looked at the situation and as Brian Cody said there like if it had been saved I think Galway would have probably gone down and won the game then from the psychological boost they got from that so I would have gone with Henry Shefflin right to stick it over the bar if I was on the line there as his manager Okay, a few people from the Davin stand asking about Richie Powers point now w ironically where we were sitting was actually in line with the shot just by coincidence we were at that in the corner there the RT studio let's have a look at it and TV doesn't show us definitively sure it doesn't no um and delighted now you put me in the spot for I know, this well, one, Des. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, it, it, to be honest, when we were behind it, it looked as if it either went over the post or maybe faded out. It, it looked as if it faded out, to be honest. What did you say to me when I said, did you think that was over? I, to honest, be honest, I'm I'm, what did you say? <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd have to be honest, um, it was a point. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, it, it, did, it looked as if it faded out, to be honest, and I suppose there was confusion with the umpires. The well, first, the, the, the first lad the that was near, but I think both of them took their eyes off it very quick. They didn't watch it fall, finishing out, and the first lad was heading out, and the second lad was coming over for the flag. So I suppose some confusion reigns. Maybe give the benefit to the forward. I think Pinocchio's nose got longer. You know that when he was telling lies. Um, Eddie thought it might have gone wide at the time, as I recall, but maybe I'm, I'm, I'm misinterpreting it. Uh, did you think it was a score, Donald? Well, I, I wasn't sure, Des, to be okay, honest with you. But no, when you look, normally the player, unless you're a fantastic actor altogether, right? Okay, and Richie Poe was adamant that it had gone over. Yeah. And the great Chris Ring, you say, hit the ball as high as you can because it makes it very difficult for for the umpires. And you know, mm. and with, with the benefit of a replay and a camera behind the goal that might attract the ball maybe might be ma make a better decision but you know you'd have to give the umpires the benefit of the doubt in this one sure and there were several winning chances for each team in the dying minutes which added to the drama of the game Donald well, well, well there was this and, and, and you know as you said that was you know you, you'd have put your house on Joe sticking mm, that over yeah. the bar like you know I mean he's an excellent free taker and um, you know another wide from Galway right. uh, did you think you he know, was gone Jack then well, I looked at the, you know, this, this of course was a, you know, marvellous save. That would have ended a match if Colin Fenley had yeah. stuck down in the back of the net. So, you know, I suppose nobody will crib with the fact that was a, you know, apart from maybe, you know, the managers and the, and the yeah, players yeah. might feel here and there. But I think when you weigh up the balance of it, right, I think that both teams will be delighted that they got off the field and they have another chance. But as we saw at the end of the match, real big talking point between the managers and lots of other people, that free at the end. Yeah, it's... Um it's definitely something that's a, a big bone of contention and two managers kind of locked horns over it as well. Yeah. But um, I would feel, I suppose as a forward, sometimes, you know, you, you try to, I suppose, you know, get a free. Like, I know if I was in that position, you'd be trying to win the free because you know you're a point down. 
But I think what I would consider, what has to be considered in making the decision, you know, has the defender impeded the forward? Has the forward made a, a big effort to try to get around him and he has stopped yeah. him getting around him? And I don't think he did in that case. I think, you know, uh, he played for the free. Yep. But look, yeah. it was, I presume... Barry would have maybe done the but same. But all the AD like you'd have to admit that the goal forwards, even in training, they're taking people on. They're like the Kilkenny defence, it was four or yeah. five of them booked Jelly Cars. They're going at them. David Lynn had only one thing in mind. Take him on, he'd either take it down or go up through him. And he, he figured he's going to be taken down and then Joe knock it over. Mm. They're doing that all day. That's why they're playing all year. I don't know many yellow cards that the defenders got, but they got a lot of it because they, Galway, they, got, they got black cards early on, which probably yeah. put some of the Yeah, but Galway, under Galway would feel that they have the pace in that Kilkenny defence. No, it doesn't happen to hold them. But when, when it's 50 50, they will take them on yeah. and, and force a free, really. Okay. Yeah. And when you, when, you, when you look at it there, right, the defender had a hurley a little high. Now, it wasn't up around the neck, which is a yellow card, but it was up around the chest. And, you know, that time of a, of a game, you're a point down. You're always going to... I mean, Eddie would have done the same time. Any top-class forward would have said, you take the defender on, and if you get it, any little nudge at all, well, go down, you'll probably get the benefit of the doubt. So. Okay. Eddie wouldn't have done that. One of the biggest decisions of the day, the Sunday game, man of the match for the All-Ireland Final of 2012. And Donald, you're spokesman for the panel so talk <laughs> us through thanks Des. well mm. well we had three contenders um you know two from galway and, and one from kilkenny and the first contender was ira tanyan superb game at midfield all all through from start to finish and uh, the second was kilkenny man henry shefflin you know as as we said earlier drag kilkenny back into the game super game as well and the third was uh, joe canning excellent game for galway great first half goal and number of points and that character building point there at the end okay and who is our winner then of Man of the Match? Well, we decide on Irla Tanyan, Des. Irla Tanyan. All right then, congratulations to Irla. And let's hear from our Man of the Match and see the presentation to him today. We'll have a look at his great congratulations, skill. Congratulations, Irla. You are the RTE GAA Man of the Match and GAA President. Liam O'Neill is here to hand over the award. Congratulations, Irla. Well done. Fantastic game. Thank you. All right. Now, Eddie, let's um, yes, have a look. Yes, when, when we look back on it, you know, obviously Henry Shefflin and Joe Canning, you know, had the shootout with the freeze, but yeah. when you look at the, the 15, the, the 30 players that took to the pitch, I suppose Earl Tanyan was involved from start to finish. In the warm-up, I commented to Sir, he looked very nervous and jittery. His touch looked terrible, but it didn't affect yeah. him as the match went on. I think he was involved in everything. He tackled, ha tackled worked all day, hit a world of ball, and I suppose he was the most flu influential player on the day from, from open play. Um, it's great for him, Cyril, because, yeah. of course, he, he wasn't a regular he's starter. No, he was getting the hard to make the team. Yeah. He used to be wing forward, centre forward, and, uh, like, he's from the Ardrahan club. Big, strong, forceful player. Very, very laid back. And, like, uh, I was saying that he could miss all them thing in the, in the, in the, in the puck run, but he's a, he's a different type of player. Today, I think, can really make him, because since he's been out midfield, he's been very, very good. Like, and today, he put his stamp on it. Very strong. Like, he might have put a shot or two wide, but he had a very big influence in the game, and he'll go from strength to strength. Because I had heard some people wondering, because he's a big fella, big frame, that maybe the middle of a big pitch like Croke Park yeah. wouldn't suit him, but yeah, that, that was wasn't the case. What yes. interested me, Des, was who, who made the decision, because I, I felt yesterday that it was going to be, you know, Michael Fenley versus Irla Tanyan and, and, you know, maybe Richie Hogan against Andy Smith, you know, yeah, so, yeah. size-wise, but um, I was surprised that they lined up differently. Now, whether it was Galway made that choice or Kilkenny, I'm not quite sure, but possibly it will change. I, don't know, I would think to be Galway, because Andy Smith be from Pertumna, playing Barry Hale, Shamrock, still have this thing, you know, Michael <laughs> Fenley, but if you saw him there today, Got the hurl, tapped his hurl, yeah. like Michael Finley and he gave him the hurl and then Smith wouldn't give it back to him. Like the kind of game as you've tapped him on the back then. Like that's right. part of it and he'd know him well. So I would think to go with made sure that, that was the matchup. Right. Okay then, well we've lots more to come on the programme. Coming up next, the minor final between Dublin and Tipperary. Well, it's been over five hours since that nail-biting end to today's All-Ireland hurling final. Have the emotions simmered? Well, Marty is with the Kilkenny camp. Well, as you can imagine, Des, it's a, a room here in the City West that's full of mixed emotions. Delighted, of course, to be still in the All-Ireland final and disappointed to have not won it. But who better to describe it all or the, the manager of the Kilkenny team and, of course, the man himself, Henry Shefflin. But first of all, Brian Cody, how do you feel? Are you delighted to be still alive? Are you disappointed you didn't win it? I suppose just a strange feeling, Marty. You know, it's different to what we would have experienced before in all Ireland finals. You know, you realise coming up, there's always a potential for winning or for losing. And today there's a third potential, obviously, which seldom happens, obviously. And, you know, the game is a draw, which means nobody's gone home with the McCarthy Cup. It means 
three weeks' time, two teams will go and do a battle again. Henry, was there ever any doubt when you stood over that penalty? Were you going to go for a goal or take the point? What was your first option? Yeah, well, my first option obviously was the one I decided to go with, but I, I, I'll be honest, I did think about it, you know, but I suppose at that stage of the match it was critical that, you know, if, if they'd have stopped it, you know, we were we were really going to be under pressure, so it was going to be a big score, so I suppose I, I, I put the trust in the backs that we could hold out, but unfortunately they got a free or two and that, that brought them back level. Final question, how do you prepare for an All-Ireland final replay? Because this is new even for you, despite your illustrious career, you have three weeks of a gap. Yeah, it's, it's different, it's uncharted territory, you know, and obviously we'll have to get together and, and look at things, it won't be my just decision, like, I mean, we'll deal with all the Martin and Mick and the medical team and everybody else and look at it and see exactly what's the best way forward, because, like I said, it is uncharted territory, because obviously all teams will be hoping to, um, I'd say, a peak physically and mentally everything for all Ireland final day, but now we have to just regroup, but look at being in the All Ireland final in three weeks' time is a nice place to be. Absolutely, and we are all looking forward to it. Henry Sheffield and Brian Cody, thank you both for joining us. So that uh, gives you a snapshot of what the feeling is like here in the City West. We're all looking forward to the replay on September 30th. All right, thanks, Marty. But what about Galway? Well, Michael Lester is amongst his own at the Regency Airport Hotel. Well, Des, I'm here at the Regency Hotel, not too far, in actual fact, from Croke Park. This is the Galway after-match function. Now, they were hoping, of course, this was going to be their victory banquet. It's not that. It's not a losing one either. And I think the atmosphere here is a little bit like after the match itself today. There's a sense of unfinished business, of course, because we all have to do this again in three weeks' time. And with me at the moment here, I have the Galway manager, Anthony Cunningham, and also Galway captain, Fergie Moore. Lads, thanks very much indeed for joining me. Anthony, you've had a couple of hours now to reflect on today's game. What are your thoughts? Well, I suppose it's a game that could have gone either way, really, and we're delighted to still be in the Championship. Uh, we're in beaten for 2012, really. It's, uh, we're facing a third game now against Kilkenny, and uh, we're really looking forward to it. I think every player that we've now had a chance to reflect on is really looking forward to three weeks' time, and uh, it'll be onwards and upwards for us. Fergal, watching that as a spectator, first half very tense, second half helter-skelter. What was it like to play in? Uh, it was a typical All Ireland final. I think Michael, um, you know, against Kilkenny, it was always going to be a tight game and a huge, a huge, huge battle, and that's what it was. And it went right down to the wire, and uh, we're extremely happy to get the replay. Nobody's been in this situation, Anthony, since 1959. You now have to plan for that replay. Normally, you've either won or you've lost, and you know where you stand. What's the plan now for the rest of the week? Well, we go back to training on Tuesday night. Uh, unfortunately, we can't stay for the end of the banquet here, so we go home in a couple of hours. And we had some recuperation there in the pool with the lads there at seven o'clock. And uh, Tuesday night will be a light session, but we'll just assess injuries and uh, get ready again. And, you know, we're, we're really looking forward to it. Uh, we have a young developing team and we're going to take a huge learning experience from this day and uh, kick on from here. Well, Anthony, if the next day is as good a match as today was, we're all looking forward to it. So, Des, that's it. Uh, not a victory uh, banquet here, as I said, at the Regency Hotel. But I've been talking to some of the people who have been staying here for the weekend. They had a very good night last night. In actual fact, some of them might just actually... Fancy a quiet night today.